welcome back. In today's video I will try to explain luminosity mask and compare them to blend ranges. If we understand how they work we can also understand their differences and when to use them or when not to use them. So let's get started by explaining what a luminosity mask is. I will keep this as simple as possible. A luminosity mask is a mask that is created based on the luminosity or the brightness of the image. By applying a luminosity mask you can control the strength of a layer based on brightness. You could do things like darkening only the dark areas of an image without darkening the bright areas. As masks also have a gradual behavior, you can also achieve things like apply the effect more on the bright areas and less on the dark areas. So, how do we create them? Well, you could draw the mask by hand, but I don't think that's what you're looking for. Jokes aside, the easiest way to create a luminosity mask is to press command option click on the layer you want to create a mask from. This will bring up a selection where the bright will be dominant, meaning the brighter the area, the closer it will be to white in the mask, and the darker the area, the closer it will be to black. Let me show you this by filling the selection with white, which is the current selected primary color, and invert the pistol selection and fill the inverted area with black, the current secondary color. So, this is how the default luminosity mask would look like. As you might notice, the whole range of brightness is in the mask. This default mask puts, as you would say, priority on the bright areas. And if this was applied to a darken adjustment, the bright areas would be darkened more than the dark areas. Another way of getting a luminosity mask selection, which is less gradual but more specific, is by using the select menu and selecting a tonal range. Let me select the shadows. If I now fill the selection with white, you can see that only the dark areas are targeted. Let me put a layer behind it and you can now see the mask is less gradual than the default mask. I hope you understand the idea behind luminosity masks now. So let me apply a curves adjustment layer to darken the image without any mask. As you see the whole image is darkened. Now let's copy this curves layer and apply a luminosity mask to it. By first command option clicking on the source image layer and then on the curves layer pressing the mask button. If there is a selection, Affinity will use the selection as a mask, which now results in the curves layer having a luminosity mask. If I option alt click on the mask, we can see the mask. Let us compare the two curves layer. Well, disabling and enabling is not working very well for comparison. So I will create a rectangle for each adjustment, which will act as an additional mask to them, so we can see the results side by side. The difference is huge, as you can see. If I modify the curves adjustment, you will notice that the change affects the bright areas more than the dark areas. Before we continue, let me add another curves layer, but this time with a luminosity mask to the highlights. I will use the select highlight from the select tonal range menu and apply this selection as a mask. As I modify the curves adjustment, you notice it affects only the highlights. Okay, before I add another adjustment, 
Let's quickly organize everything for better comparison later. So, on the far left is the curves adjustment without any mask, followed by the default luminosity mask, and finally another curves layer without any mask, which is exactly the same as the first left area. I'm now going to apply a blend range, and will demonstrate that blending range is just another way of luminosity masking but easier in my honest opinion. So let me open the blend settings and focus on the underlaying composition ranges. On the left area are the darks and the right area are the brights. The height of the chart represents the amount of blending. The top is full and the bottom is none. Now, if I move the left node all the way to the bottom, it means that pure black areas in the underlaying layer will not be affected and gradually, as we move to the bright area, the current layer will be more blended. And this is also exactly what the default luminosity mask does. As you can see, the third curves adjustment is exactly the same as the second. So you might ask, if the blend range is an exact replicate of the luminosity mask, so what's the difference then? Well, the luminosity mask is a static mask and will not be influenced by any changes in the below layers. Let me demonstrate. Here is a current mask of the curve. If I now change the size of the pixel layer below, you will notice that the curves layer is now out of sync, which makes sense as the mask has not changed. Let me undo the layer resize and enable the blend range curves adjustment. And here comes the difference with the luminosity mask. The blend range is dynamic. It will adjust on the layer below. So if I resize the layer, you will notice that the blend range curve still works without any issues. Okay, it looks and feels like the blend range is superior to the luminosity mask. Well, I do believe that is true in most cases. However, its biggest advantage can also be its biggest disadvantage. If you do adjustments below the blend range layer, it can act differently. The luminosity mask adjustment will always act on the mask created. Let me put the two layers side by side first and show you what I mean. If I now add a layer below the two layers and do an adjustment affecting the luminosity, the two curves adjustment will start behaving differently as you can see with the brightness adjustment. Similar with an HSL adjustment if we change the luminosity. Changing the color has no effect. Here is another example by changing the channel curves. As the luminosity mask adjustment doesn't care what's happening below, it is fixed by the mask created from the source image, which in some cases would be exactly what you want. So, in cases where your adjustment should be fixed based on the luminosity of the original source, you go with a luminosity mask. In all other cases, I personally believe using a blend range is much easier and will get the job done faster. I believe the popularity of luminosity mask is because of Photoshop, as the blend if function in Photoshop is not as customizable as the blend range in Affinity where you can have multiple transition nodes and non-linear transitions. Anyway, another advantage of a luminosity mask method would be that you could adjust or override it manually modifying the mask itself. With the blend range method, this would not be easily possible. I hope these two reasons make clear why you would use a luminosity mask instead of a blend range. 
Both have their uses and hopefully it makes more sense now. In the next video about this topic, I will focus on how to create a luminosity mask from a blend range. Thanks again for watching.